You ready for this? Ready as I'm gonna be. This week, I'll attempt to prove that man can fly. The trees bring the fear into it. Five days, zero experience. The danger of permanent damage is a real concern. And the world's best teachers. The end goal is to move into real world environments. I'm Tim Ferriss, best-selling author and human guinea pig. I'll show you how to make the impossible possible by bending the rules. I'll find the world's best teachers and push myself to the edge to deconstruct, decode, and demystify some of the world's toughest challenges in record time. If I can do it, so can you. So I'm in Los Angeles this morning, and I'm here to learn the art and science of parkour. Parkour is the art of efficient movement. It's about getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible and doing it with style. Doing things you never thought your body could do. I'm a child of the 80s and grew up wanting to be a ninja and a break dancer. And this is the closest I think you can come to combining those two things. My dream scenario is to hit what's called a double Kong. My goal this week is to learn the fundamentals of parkour, and at the end of the week, to be able to execute one complex parkour trick and also complete a challenging outdoor obstacle course. Only one problem, I am afraid of heights. My guru this week is Brian Orozco, Hollywood stuntman, professional parkour athlete, and instructor at Tempest Freerunning Academy. So this is the, uh, this is the spot. Yeah. Huh? All of these spaces draw from different areas where we like to train, places around the world. Anything that we do in here, mm -hmm. although it is nice and soft and forgiving, the end goal is to move into real world environments where things are rigid and unforgiving. So where are we starting? Well, we were going to start off with some monkey bars through the rafters. <laughs> Swinging up the I mean, it's good man. for strength training, and you get over your fear of heights. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, give me a <laughs> no, heart attack sorry. within the first 60 seconds all of walking in. All ground level, all ground level right. stuff. Yeah. Awesome. I started dreaming of learning parkour after seeing the initial chase scene in Casino Royale, the James Bond film, which totally blew my mind. But this week, what I'm going to have to do is group parkour skills to tackle them efficiently. And with Brian's help, learn the critical 20% of skills that allow me to adapt to 80% of the obstacles I'll face. One of the basic skill groups is vaulting, which involves using your hands to help you clear over an obstacle. I'll take you through the, what I consider the core vaults. Okay. Let's start off with the safety vault. Okay. That's it. That's the safety vault. So there's the entry, the yep. vault, and the exit. Yep. And most people get to the vault and stop. Okay. The exit is just as important. Okay. Uh, and so whenever you do a vault, keep running. Okay. It's easier when you do it faster. Yeah. Okay. It's very counterintuitive, huh? Yeah. We begin with the simpler vaults, then progress to those that require more coordination, slightly more technique. So now we're going to get to the Kong. The Kong is the baby brother of the double Kong. This progression starts with an assisted box jump to clear the obstacle. Up and off. Then you gradually use less and less help from your feet to help you get over. Maybe just one step. And then we're going all the way over. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. So in that situation, if I feel this falling over, instead of putting my hands back to stop, I'll lean forward. Because then as it hits the ground, I just roll right out of it. OK, got it. I've made some decent progress with the Kong Vault, but my homework, and it's very important homework, is to really focus on speed, then nailing the landing, and smoothing out my exit. Brian brings me back the next day to work on a new set of parkour skills. The vaults I learned yesterday lay the groundwork, hopefully, for the double Kong. And the skills I'm practicing today apply more directly to the final course in the trees. We start with jumps. We're not trying to jump at the target. Imagine yourself trying to jump over it. 
So the precisions are one of, if not the most important thing for me to get right, because sticking the landings in the trees will determine whether I fall and get injured or not. When we're rolling, we want to keep a nice, firm hoop. Learning how to fall safely is super critical in parkour. The higher you go, the more violent it becomes. So this is why we're stepping it up in increments. God, I hate night. <laughs> jumping off a wall that's only six feet high. Landing only a few times, I uh, put my knees and legs under tremendous strain. I think that I may have torn something in my right quad. How are your knees, ankles? Uh, they're sore. I mean, each time I jump, I just have that apprehension about doing something to them, okay. but. That's fine. Let's work on some Tic Tacs, some cat leaps, and then we're gonna try doing a cat to cat. A cat to cat is doing two cat leaps in a row, oftentimes changing your elevation either up or down. Nice. Doing the cat to cat to cat was an amazing experience. Well, that wasn't as graceful. I'm already impressed with, with you getting the first one so clean. <sighs> So that reminded me of why I am doing this in the first place, which is it's really fun to do things with your body that you never could have conceived of doing with your body. The trees bring the fear into it. Some practicing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're at Chatsworth Park, which is located about 40 minutes north of downtown LA. It's a very popular spot for parkour athletes. And this is really where parkour is meant to be done. Outside, not always in the gym. I think it's great to start in the gym yeah. because it allows you a lot more confidence. Sure. But one of the pitfalls of training in the gym is a lot of people become gym rats. You should really only be using the gym for experimentation and refinement of new tricks. The course that Brian has set for me is set in a grove of oak trees, which of course plays directly into my fear of heights. The trees bring the fear into it, just because you're basically walking on freestanding arms of wood with a whole lot of negative space underneath. My course is spread across six different trees. This is the starting line. You start down here in this little Y, come all the way up the path, staying on this branch. And then from here, the idea is to get to this green zone right here. Each tree requires at least a few different parkour techniques, all of varying complexity. When you come out the other side running this way, you're up on this branch to this zone right here. And then you have to get over to that zone. And to this zone right here. Now, when you say get to that zone, does that mean the intention is direct line or? Either. Okay. You can always make it through. It's just a matter of how fast. And then you have to go under that branch and then across to here, to this branch, all the way down through, down under this branch, and then we're passing back through. So this brings you up into the tree. There's a big X here, yeah. and there's a big X there. Doesn't matter which way you go. Then you drop to the ground and go under this bottom branch. Then we come back in this direction. Okay. Go up through the V up over this zone right here, back down out of the tree, and then the finish line was essentially right here. Yeah. Some practicing to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the obstacle course. Yep. And I'm beginning to think uh -huh. that balance could be my biggest issue. Yeah, it's a problem. I meet up with another incredible parkour athlete and trainer and good buddy of mine, Travis Brewer, to practice some of these techniques at the original Muscle Beach at Santa Monica Pier. We're gonna simulate some of the stuff that you're gonna see in your final course to work on your balance a little bit more. I think one of the first things we could start on would be the balance beam here. We'll try to jump onto it, and then we're gonna run across. So just applying some of the techniques before, like tic-tac, jump, rail run, precision off, Speed. Oh. 
Nice. There we go. One of the fastest ways to learn new skills, counterintuitively, is by watching the experts do them at full speed. Oh my god, I just saw a double call. Live for the first time in my life. OK, that just blew my mind. I go to Tempest's open gym night so that I can pick up as many tricks as possible by watching, recording, and asking questions. Do you mind if I grab a handheld just to take some footage of you doing the leaping? Do you That'd be awesome. Yeah. Video recording is my secret weapon for finding what I call implicit expertise, the things that experts do but fail to teach. The danger of permanent damage is a real concern. I'm declaring a cheat day just a few meals early. Quite frankly, I'm pretty sick of chicken breasts and lentils and all that help. So I'm going to go animal style. Thank you very much. Animal style double double, what better for a double Kong? And no, it is not slow carb diet compliant. The real reason I'm eating this is like just enough sodium in the pickles to restore my electrolyte balance for a serious marathon. I can't say with a straight face. <laughs> Back at Tempest Gym for the moment of truth. To attempt the double calm. What we're going to focus on are the two pieces that make this double calm work. The first one is about elevating your hips. Okay. Popping up here like this. See how high my hips are here? Yep. The second one is about getting those hips back underneath you. Got it. Yes. So as we start to increase the speed, so you're popping up on one foot and then dive conging on the yeah. second. And then eventually you won't need it all. I think you're almost going into like a handstand. Yeah. I mean, you're almost in that, that inverted. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Good. Yeah. Thanks, man. How's that feel? Good. So Tim, you know what you did wrong there? I'm Momentum. Sure my, yeah. Yeah. Your speed. I was thinking too much of my steps, so I didn't get yeah. any speed into it. I was just kind of. Should I go for the tap or just go for it? You should go for you it. You should go just for go for it. it. Moment of truth right here. You got this. That feel good. Yeah. Aside from feeling the muscle in my right leg pop this time. <laughs> nice work, man. Yeah. Duck it. Man. That was great. And this here. The biggest double cog this man has ever done. That's yeah. true. That is. PR right there. Yeah. That was a PR. That was a big time PR. Landing the double cog was incredible, but it was also a reality check. My legs are really torn up, so I decided to find professional help. Okay, lying on your back here. Gastroc flexibility is adequate. <clears throat> Stay relaxed. Tighten both legs. So the right VMO is way bigger than the left. So infrapatella tendon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll wake up. Got your attention. Super patella tendon. You feel some of that? That feels okay. The infrapatella tendon is red hot. What I suggest we do is treat it aggressively. I will tell you the danger of de doing some more permanent damage below the kneecap and the infrapatella tendon, where the tendon will start to degenerate more, um, is, ser is, is, a real, is a real concern. This is not good news. I don't want to risk permanent injury to my knees in the final tree course, and my ligaments and tendons just aren't up to snuff, at this point at least. So right now it's in spasm. You've disrupted some muscle fibers by overusing it. It's really inflamed, including the connective tissue above it, which is, I think, a lot of what you're feeling here. Uh, what are some of the other supplemental tools, pills and potions, that you would suggest I do? It's going to be stretching and icing. Yeah. Um, wearing the compression gear is a good idea. Yeah. Um, in fact, we have a compression garment just for the knee itself. Mm, great. So we could even, I think, put that on underneath the compression gear. The plan is to throw everything at this problem so we can hopefully get inflammation way down, get my range of motion way back up, so that I can cross the line, at the very least, in the final tree course.
Going against doctor's orders, I decide to roll the dice and attempt the final tree course. And as part of my prescribed precaution with my brutalized legs, I'm uh, putting on my compression pants. These itty bitty pants. <laughs> so you can see, I can't even get it past my foot. You gotta get them over the ankle. Match these up on the kneecaps. Get these as high as possible. Do a little Jean-Claude Van Damme. And then you're ready to go to Whole Foods and hit on some cuties. That's it. The course is comprised of six individual trees. Each tree has paint marking a zone or gate you must pass through. Green means you go over the obstacle, yellow means you go under it. There are multiple options for passing through each tree depending on your skill level. The most direct route is often the most difficult, but it results in a faster time. The mind is willing, the body may be weak, and we'll see where we land. Uh, hopefully not on my head. The trees I'm most concerned about are the first tree, the third tree, and the fourth tree. The first tree will definitely test my balance as well as my precision jumps. Brian or Travis can clear this distance between the green zones in one single jump, but I'll most likely be taking a much easier route. The third tree will again test my precision jumps and balance. I'll then need to go under this branch and hit another precision. Last, I need to walk all the way down this branch, jump to the ground, and go under the final branch. In tree four, I need to run up a steep incline, precision jump across two limbs, take an eight foot drop down, and then scoot under a lower branch. All right, so I want to get you started in the Y right there. All right. You ready for this? As ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> All right, I'm going to count you in. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. You got this. As soon as I get up into the first tree, the problems start. My muscles aren't firing properly in my legs, which means my entire body is shaking uncontrollably. All I'm worried about is falling and injuring everything further. Make sure to stay centered, especially on that tree. The second tree, thankfully, turns out to be no problem at all. Just cat leap, muscle up, jump, and land. And that gives me some confidence to try to tackle tree three. Nice balance. I'm really wobbly in this tree, too, and it's actually getting embarrassing. But I'm trying to keep my legs as straight as possible so they don't buckle while I focus on trying to hit the next precision jump. Keep your eye on your feet and keep your weight balanced. Nice. Way to adapt with the roll, too. Thanks, man. That was great. I'm gonna try it one more time. My apprehension with this specific jump is irrational. And you have to distinguish between rational fears with real consequences, like fear of heights, versus irrational fears where there really aren't any consequences. This precision jump is only five feet, so I have to try to tackle it. There's no downside. Nice, nice. Awesome, Tim. That was a great power move. Now, and jump down in between the branches. Under the yellow. Wow. Nice. Nailing the precision jump was definitely one of the highlights of my run. Unfortunately, it was also the end of it. Time out. What's wrong, Tim? I'm just so worried. My legs are buckling when I try to put weight on it. As much as I really want to see you run the course, there's a point when you realize you're just going to do more damage, and it's not worth it. Yeah. After talking over all of my options with Brian and Travis, we decide it's best to call it a day, instead of risking some type of permanent or chronic injury. So I didn't complete my final challenge, but that doesn't mean a failed experiment for this week, because there's no such thing. Through parkour, I've learned to view the world around me as a playground. And regaining child's mind is a huge leap forward for me, not a leap backward. Nice. I think, most importantly, it's not overcoming your fears. It is constantly facing your fears, being present with your fears, so that you become comfortable with discomfort. Hey guys, Tim Ferriss here. 
One of the things that kills me about TV is that you have to take all of this amazing footage. In our case, we had five to six days of 12 to 16 hours typically per day, and you have to chop it down to 21 or 22 minutes, which is a 30 minute show with the ads removed. It just makes me want to stab myself in the eyeballs with bicycle spokes. It's so agonizing. The good news is we have all that footage. And so we've taken huge extended scenes, we've taken interviews, we've taken tutorials, everything imaginable that we could get our hands on that we thought was really world-class that we wanted to put in. And you can find it at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV, all spelled out, F-O-U-R, et cetera. And we really feel like we could have made the best two-hour documentary imaginable on the subject that you just saw or had five different shows of equal quality, all different with the footage that we captured. So please check it out. There's some amazing stuff. And you can also check out the podcast where I do very long, in some cases, two to three hour interviews with a lot of the experts in this show. And that's the Tim Ferriss Show, which was nominated one of the best of iTunes, which I'm very, very happy about. And uh, you can check out both. So find everything at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV. And if you think that's an oxymoron, by the way, you're right. If you want a four-hour work week, do not work in television. Thank you for watching.